Hi there, my GCSE Revision. Today what we're going to be looking at is the classical approach to macroeconomics. This is part of the macroeconomics series. And what we're going to be doing is looking at it from the ASAD point of view. We know that there's three different approaches. There's the classical, which was the first one, which came around in the 18, 1800s. The second one, which is the Keynesian, which was first released in 1936. And the new monetarists and new classical school, which was came about in the 1970s after stagflation. But anyway, today we're talking about the classical theory, and this was advocated by Adam Smith. And Adam Smith was a great believer in the free market economy. He believed that markets fixed through the invisible hand. And that's basically how this theory is based on. It's based on the invisible hand. And the invisible hand means that if there's any problems in the economy, it will automatically fix. So they were a great believer of no government intervention, also known as Lizzie's fair. So no government intervention. So if we look at this ASAD diagram, we can start by labeling the axes. So the, the X axis is Y, which is GDP. We have the Y axis, which is price level, essentially inflation. And we've got three different curves on here. Now, Let's look at, uh, look at each curve in turn. So the first one, the blue one, is what we call the long run aggregate supply curve. Let me just rewrite that. It is the long run aggregate supply curve. And the reason it's vertical is because the classical economist's thinking is that in the long run, they are always at the full employment output. That's why we'll label this YFE. This is always the full employment output. And this coincides with Say's law. Say's law states, Say's law, Say's law states that supply creates demand. And we can explain this using the circular flow of income. If we put firms at the top, Households down at the bottom. And let's just change the colour to blue. Here, the firms will play the households through factor payments, FP, factor payments. So essentially, here we go. So firms will create products. They will employ more labour. By employing more labour, there'll be more factor, factor payment to the households. These And this supply is going to create demand because households now have more money. Uh, therefore, there's going to be more money spent on domestic consumption, which is going to go back to the firm. Obviously, you have some withdrawals from the economy in the form of exports, in the form of savings, and in taxation. But then you're going to have injections back into the economy in the form of investment and two others, government expenditure and imports. So that's um, essentially stating that supply so producing these goods is going to create demand because households have more money to spend on the on the goods. And this is why we have this vertical long run aggregate supply, because let me just, if I were to label the aggregate demand curve, aggregate demand curve is the, Keynes, is the same for the Keynesian models, the classical model, uh, the components being SIG, XM, domestic consumption, investment, government expenditure, and net trade. Um, so as you can see here, what, basically what they're saying is supply creates their own demand. Therefore, any change in demand is not going to have a change in the real GDP. Only supply has changes in the real GDP. And you can see this here because if AD was to magically shift up, let's say if there was a fiscal policy, as you can see, there is no change in the national, in the GDP. But... If supply change, let's say due to um, an increase in the factor of productions, production, let's say there was an increase, there was a new factory being built. But you can see here, this will shift and there'll be a new, new equilibrium. So that's essentially explaining Say's law. And so this next curve, we've got obviously talked about AD and LRS. Next, we'll talk about the short run aggregate supply. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you uh, what the classical thinking actually is. So we'll, we'll do this by showing a shift in aggregate demand. So let's 
imagine there's a there's a decrease in investment and this causes aggregate demand to shift leftwards. And what this does means we're producing, we are currently here in the economy, Y, let's call this Y2, and national output has decreased and we have started to see, oops, we're starting to see a decrease in inflation. So we might have disinflation or it may even be deflation. And this will be because of demand pull. Demand pull deflation, not demand pull inflation. So we're probably going to have demand demand deficient unemployment as well. So the natural rate of unemployment will increase uh, on the Phillips curve. But as you can see, aggregate demand has shifted and we're currently producing, well, our, our current GDP is lower than our desired full output. And the only way, well, the, the classical theorists believe that we are always producing on this long run aggregate supply, and this is because of flexible prices. So, essentially, to get back to our long run aggregate supply, we need to shift aggregate supply, short run aggregate supply. And this shifts, and this shifts along here, like this. Once this short run aggregate supply is shifted, we're going to be back to our long run aggregate supply. Yeah. As illustrated. Wait, and the reason this long run aggregate supply will shift down is these flexible prices. These flexible prices will mean that, or well, essentially in the short run, labour will not want to adjust their wages downwards mainly because of minimum wages and trade unions. But over time, they will realise that the economy is in a recession because of this deflationary gap. Deflationary gap, also known as a recessionary gap. This can be illustrated using the Keynesian cross. And they will, they will start to revise their wages downwards and this will lower the cost. And that's why the short run aggregate supply would shift rightwards. What we need to remember though is in the short run, wages and other factors of production are always fixed. So you must remember that they're fixed. And in the long run, as we've learned from micro, it is always variable. As long as you remember those, then you easily remember the classical macroeconomics. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if there's any other topics you want me to go over, please let me know in the comments.